How's it going, everyone? We are back for another cup tie against another Kent side, Blackheath, today. It's the Bertie Joel Trophy and clubs from Surrey, Sussex, Kent, Middlesex, anywhere around London, really, fight it out, bidding to win the comp that's been going on in one way or another since 1967. Kent Prem side Blackheath won the toss and wanted first use of the deck today, sending us out to field. Connor Golding takes the first, hopefully not too stiff from the action against Mayfield yesterday. An unreal match with over 600 runs scored. If you haven't seen it, make sure to check it out. And it's pretty evident early on there won't be as much value for runs here compared to yesterday. From the other end and opening our account today is Aaron Brown getting on the scorecard early with Thorn Park snaffling that away to his right. Connor gets his first, the batsman feeling for that one wide of off stump and Russell at first grabber cradles that somehow. The host 12 for 2 from 4 overs. A testing period for the batsman as man on screen Brownie is hard done by not to come away with a second there. So 46 for 2 from 10 and 5 more overs until we get out the power play and can spread the field. The first 15 overs out of 45 today, the power play, were only two fielders allowed outside the inner ring. Walker changes up the bowling and George Cave comes on from this end.
the batsman taking a liking to anything short of a length though, not letting the caveman settle into his spell. And from the far end, we've got club legend and Sussex over 50s feisty bowler, Adrian Chapel. With a score at 95 for two from 20, Walk shuffles the pack again and turns to the offspin of Rowan Norde. What a catch that is. Thorn Parks take a bow. Taking that one casually at short mid-wicket dive into his right. And definitely worthy of the old slow-mo replay. Mind you, not a bad bit of camera work to pick that up. And now Osmonds are here in the act two. In the space of four balls, Rowan and Osmond working in tandem to remove the two set batsmen. And with 20 overs left, Blackheath 114 for four from 25 overs. Now number two for Rowan, Connor taking that little chip comfortably. And it's a good period this for us with a cluster of wickets falling in these middle overs. A quick fire 50 for the Blackheath's number six, Matthew Golding, and some much needed boundaries for the hosts on their pursuit of setting a match winning total.
Brownie back on and picks up the court and bold. Blackheath with five overs left, now 211 for six. And another court and bold. This one just a little bit sharper than Aaron's. A little worrying that Con's managed to tweak his groin in taking that, but nothing too serious, fingers crossed. Golding gets his namesake with that little tickle down the leg side. Not that the bat is too pleased with this decision. Either way, 85 from 55 balls has got the host innings back on track. Aaron's second court and bold and third wicket of the innings. The left armour has now taken 16 wickets in the four games we've played this season. So just short of that 250 milestone, Blackheath end up on 247 for nine from their 45 overs. Three wickets for Connor and Aaron and two for Rowan today. 247, a competitive total. And after a great spread at tea, Russell and Overseas Thorn kick things off for us in reply. After that maiden ton yesterday, Thorn can't replicate it today. That one just sticking in the wicket slightly and popping up the catch to give Blackheath their first. Connor's in at three and that groin strain wasn't too serious luckily. He's got plenty of time to bat. Let's hope it holds out. Ten overs in and 51 for one on the board. Russ looking a million dollars again for his 35 runs so far. And it's 197 left to win.
And those two well-cultured runs gives Russ another 50. He's looked amazing in the power play today, hitting some incredible shots down the ground. But that's Russ's day over. That cat's judged to have carried by the standing umpire. And it doesn't take a body language expert to tell Russ isn't too happy with that decision. So walks to the crease at 93 for two and a lot of work to be done by the skipper today. His innings rather short-lived though, going back to that one and those two wickets falling very closely, not ideal for us. Yeah! Plenty of great catches on show today and that's right up there. Backpedaling to take that down at long off. Three wickets falling for three runs isn't great for this chase. Just over halfway into the innings and the scenario, 142 to win from 132 balls. Cades goes through the gate and a serious lack of partnerships is putting the host right into the driving seat. Aaron Brown next to the crease and an injection of boundaries from the left-hander is much needed if we're going to progress today. Oh no. Oh, sorry, lad. No. A second wicket for the Blackheath off spinner has a sitting at 159 for six. The figure in the bottom right, the DLS par score, is quite a good indicator of where we should be. Aaron, the next to be caught in the deep, his cameo of 32 coming to an end. Rowan trapped in front of all three and now Osman caught in the ring. They've just needing 69 with just one wicket left. KV caught on the fence, finishing the proceedings. Blackheath winning by 58 rounds today and progressing into the next round of the comp. James Russell, our top scorer is 51 and no one really standing up to bat long and deep to win the match for us. For that reason, you'd say the hosts did bat better today and were the better team. Best of luck in the next round and for the rest of the season. 
So that's two Sundays worth of cricket for the Bridges and we've been dumped out of both Sunday Cups. We look to go again in the league next week and hopefully go deep in the T20 Cup coming up soon. Thanks everyone for watching and we'll catch you next time.